Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Thanks for coming to Armand Larvey today. This is the annual substitute training and luncheon. So uh, this is for our licensed substitutes and our classified substitutes. Uh, most of the slides are pertinent for, for both groups, but there will be a portion of this uh, morning that we'll be going over license requirements only. Uh, and I'll go over the agenda of the day and all of that good stuff for you. We should be finished with this portion of it at about 11.30. So our mission of the Herbison School District, serving the needs of all children with rigorous programs, choices, high expectations, mutual respect, and excellence in all endeavors. This is what we as a district and everybody that works for the district, all of our stakeholders do day in and day out. The vision of our district, you can see it up here. This is on all of our, uh, it's on our public websites, all the information that goes out. Hermerson School District, striving to be Oregon's premier public school district. The vision is, the vision is where we're striving to be. So uh, we're striving to be Oregon's premier public school district. So introductions, it uh, looks like they are just perfect timing. Uh, introductions for the folks that uh, assisted a lot of you that came in that are new substitutes. Uh, and for the ones that are returning, a lot of these folks will be familiar faces. My name is John Mishra. I'm the Director of Operations and Business Services for the district. This is my fifth year in the district. I started out as the principal at Sandstone Middle School. I was there for six months. Then I went to the old Arm and Larvey. I was there for 18 months uh, as the principal there. And then after this building was constructed and ready to go, I moved to the district office as the director of operations and business services. And this is my third year in that position. I would like to introduce you to Donna Thomas, human resources manager. Donna, raise your hand. All right, excellent. Uh, Shannon Charlo, Human Resources Assistant. She is uh, brand new to our team. Uh, Elaine Main is our food service bookkeeper. She also assists with some of the sub calling today. She's at Hermiston High School assisting with registration. So if you call in, you may uh, get her uh, to assist you with your sub stuff. And Tanya Langley, Maintenance League Se Secretary who deals with maintenance and custodial. Okay, agenda for the day, you can see it up there just quickly. We'll go through ASOP, the pay rates, employee access center. The main part of this is the policy training. It is required for you to be, to substitute in the Hermiston School District to go through the policy training. That part gets to be kind of dry and mundane because I will just read it to you word for word. It's not really, I'm not modeling good teaching skills, but that's just one of the things that we have to do, word for word off of it. Uh, then we'll talk about keys, your check-in and your check-out procedure. And then for retirees, we have some information on there about PERS and what are some things you need to do to keep yourself uh, from not getting uh, any adverse action with your retirement. Dr. Mayako, our superintendent of schools, will have some uh, words for you too. And then after that, we'll do introduction of school board, district and building administrators, and our lead secretaries. And then we will pass the mic and you will have an opportunity to introduce yourself. And then we'll do lunch. Okay, so ASOP, uh, ASOP is our substitute management system. All of you should have an active uh, ASOP account. You can, uh, they're on ASOP. ASOP does a very good job of providing training for uh, folks that need it. So on there, you can access the training videos. And to do that, the screenshot, the ASOP screens changed a little bit. I think it changed in the spring of last year. It looks a lot friendlier. It's a lot easier to use. So I went into my own personal account. You go into ASOP, if you click the help button right here on the right side, employee help comes up and on there are documents and videos. And if you look in this video section, there are a number of videos that will help you uh, through that process. Once you view the video, access the documents. If you still have questions, please give Shannon a call at the district office. Her contact information will be on here at the end. 1314 updated substitute rates of pay for licensed staff or teachers that, are, that hold a TSPC license. Your rate of pay is $170.76 a day. If you are in a position for 11 or more days, you're called a long-term sub, your rate then goes to $175.31 a day. These rates are set, set by the legislature, the Oregon State Legislature, so we update these as they come through. Uh, at this time, and we will probably be updating this in January, uh, for a classified EA, if you're in subbing in a building for an as an educational assistant, an ELL assistant, a special ed assistant, you will be paid $8.95 an hour. For other positions, if you're in, in the office subbing for a secretary, or if you're in subbing for the custodial positions, you will get paid $0.40 cents per hour less than step one on the salary schedule of that particular job category. So if you have questions on what that rate of pay is, give us a call at the HR department and we can provide that for you. 
payday, check in, check out. Payday is the 25th of each month. Generally, if it falls on the 25th, falls on a Saturday, you will be paid the day before. So it'll be the 24th. If it falls on a Sunday, you'll be paid the date after. So in August, uh, the 25th falls on a Sunday. So payday is August 26th. Check in and check out sheets must be signed daily to ensure pay. Uh, at that time, please make sure that you turn in your badge and if you have any keys. Anytime worked after the 5th will be paid the following month. Checks are direct deposit. We're a 100% de direct deposit district. So if you signed up today, we ask you to bring a pay stub or uh, check, what a check, so we have that information for you. So Lisa Lohman can input that into our system. And then your pay stubs can be accessed via the Employee Access Center, which is called the EAC. And so to get to the EAC, this is what you'll do. You'll go to our website, so our Hermiston website up here, uh, hermistonk12.or.us. You'll go to Departments, then you will go to Human Resources, and then there's a link that says Employee Access Center. So if you just click that link, it'll come right up. There you will type in your user ID, which is your five-digit employee ID number. All employees of our district have a five-digit ID number. Uh, and then your password. Your default password, so if you signed up new, is your social security number with no spaces. So if you haven't been in there for a while and you forget, which happens, uh, there's a tab here that says forget your password. Uh, it'll take you here and you'll be able to go in and do some changes there. If that doesn't work for you, give us a call at the HR department and we can reset the password for you. We don't know your password, but we can reset it for you so you'll be able to go in and change it on your own. So EAC is where you will go for your pay stubs, your W-2s. Uh, W-2s are archived since we've been on Penimation, which has been five years. So I know we have uh, our uh, permanent employees that call us in the summer and say, hey, I need W-2s because I'm buying a house. So you just go to EAC, comes up on a PDF, so you'll need to have that PDF enabled on your computer, uh, and they're able to access all that information. So timesheets. When you're in the buildings, this is what it'll look like. It's your sign-in report, start date, end date, the school, uh, you're subbing for, and then the signature. So all that stuff, all that information is in there. All this does is provide a verification for us. Donna's done a really good job this last year of inputting account codes. So when one of our employees says they're going to be out, for, they're going to be out on a day, it'll go in uh, the system, it'll start calling, but again, th but then it populates with an account code too. So this just allows us to verify what that account code is and to get you paid. So please make sure you fill out that timesheet. Contact information changes, if you have an address change, phone number change, name change, or a banking change, you'll, or if you need to update your, w, your W-4s, uh, please give Shannon a call so she can help you on that. Those things do happen. Uh, a lot of times we send out correspondence, so please make sure that we have the correct information for you so we can get that to you in a timely manner. Okay, so this is the part that's going to pertain just to our licensed staff or teachers that are here. So. Uh, I'm just going to go through this because some of these requirements have changed. Uh, TSBC has gotten pretty strict on the professional development unit requirements. All, everybody that holds a TSBC issued license now is required to have PDUs, professional development units. That's something that's been rolled out for the last couple of years, but it's really gotten stringent coming into this year. And so those requirements are out. If you came in today and you're a licensed staff member, please make sure to pick up the PDU log. And the certificate for attendance. You'll get one PDU, you'll get one professional development unit uh, for attending this session today. A good rule of thumb, and TSBC will tell you this, is 25 PDUs a year. You need to have 125 of them in five years, so if you get 25 a year. So please make sure that you keep up to date on those. Uh, so if you're a restricted sub, some of you that are restricted subs, we recommend you contact TSBC immediately if your restricted license is set to expire this year. The following is what, you're to what we are told TSP is requiring for license renewal. Letter of request stating an emergency required from the district, so you'll have to contact us too, and obtain a passing score on the test of basic verbal computation skills, and obtain a passing score on the civil rights test. Okay, now this last part pertains to everybody that has a license. You can check your status by going to the TSPC website. So I'll show you what to do when you get first how to get there and what to do when you get there. So the best way to do it, because sometimes the URL changes, what I've done is I just go into Google and type in TSBC Oregon. It pulls it up, it's access it. As of this morning, this was the website. A uh, Couple places you can go for you to look yourself up. They've got two places, TSBC has two places to go. It is called Educator Lookup over here on the left-hand tab or right down here. 
in this little box on the right side. So you'll click on Educator Lookup. Once you do that, this page will come up. Uh, this is a public site, so anybody can go into this site and pull up anyone's license by their first, last name. To personalize it for you, you will go in, enter your first, middle, or last, whatever you want to here. You'll need the last probably for sure. Personalize it for you, you will enter your birth date and your ID number, which is the last four of your social security number. Once you've done that, your personal information then will pop up. So I pulled my letter up when I renewed my teaching license. The information that comes up, you'll see the letter here in a minute. Uh, licensure status page, it shows the endorsement that I hold at a uh, standard teacher license. And I would click on license approval because that's the guidance that TSPC has sent me. That's the only, that is the place that you need to go to find out what TSPC is telling you you need to know. You may call and ask someone at TSPC what I need. They may tell you something that may differ from this. This is what you need to refer to when you're looking at what you need for your license renewal. And things come up pretty quick. You think five years is a long time out? It's not. It comes pretty quick. So that's why it's real critical to go in and look at it. TSPC does a pretty good job of sending you reminders. I got one. I renewed my admin license. I renewed my re admin license. I got one six months in. Said, hey, thanks. Uh, you're License renewed six months ago at this time, you do not have to do anything. So they're really good about contacting you about what needs to get done. So now that I click on the tab, this is my guidance letter. So in order for me to renew my teaching license, I think in 2014, I think that's what it was, what it is, this is what I need to do. It spells out specifically what I need to do. There are some continuing professional development units and all those things that I need to do to take care of prior to submitting for licensure. TSPC has been pretty strict on emergency licensure. Uh, when I updated my admin license, I got a letter that said, uh, if you don't finish your stuff on time, that does not constitute an emergency. So they will not issue an emergency license. We uh, attended a training last September, and we had Vicki Chamberlain, the director, come. And she said, when you're requesting an emergency license, usually they gave you a three-year time span. Now they're saying, you give us a time span and they usually won't go over a year. So I'm just, this is the stuff out there now because uh, I just want you to make sure that you're on board with these things with the PDUs and all of those requirements that are coming up. All right, so any questions on the TSPC part of it? If you have questions, Donna Thomas, Donna, she is the one to call. She is the one to call. She will help you out. She's been at this business for over 20 years. She will be able to help you out. Uh, I went to Donna when it was time for me, six months before it was time for me to upgrade my license and said, all right, help me out. Let's just make sure we have everything on board. Because once it gets to TSPC, it's great when you have everything all packaged and ready to go. All right, so now we will get into the policy training. As I said before, yes, Thomas, yeah, Donna Thomas. Okay, now we will get into the policy training. As I said before, I will not be modeling great teaching skills here. I'm just going to have to read it to you word for word because uh, I need to make sure that everybody has all the policy training. So we, are, are we, we have a clipboard that's going around. Please make sure that you sign that. That acknowledges that you were here and attended our training and picked up our handbook. And all of these policies are included in your sub-handbook as well. So we're going to be going through these policies right here. These are all out of our board policy, and I'll go through the, all of these piece by piece. Okay, so first aid and infection control, assume all body fluids are contaminated, always follow standard procedures. When possible, have students take care of own minor injuries. FDA approved gloves are required and extra protection if needed. Wash hands if known contact, germicidal soap is preferred. Clean contaminated surfaces, disposable waste and needles, and then report. HBV and bloodborne pathogens, limit and control exposure. Comply with standards, provide protective equipment, stay up to date on technology that provides a safer working environment. Hazard materials, communication training, written program is available at the district office, and I believe most of the schools have those too. Uh, a copy of the MSDS for all chemicals is located in the custodial offices, so each of the buildings has those. One of the things that comes up is, uh, we've had it happen a couple of times, Something there's a mess in a classroom or on a desk, and the kids want to go get some. They find they go in the custodial room or they find some chemical to clean their desk. Please don't let them do that. Water and soap. Water works real well. 
please don't let them do the chemical stuff. We've tried to do a really good job of keeping that stuff out of our buildings, but uh, please uh, let's not do that. We'll do water and soap. That seems to do the job. Or give the, give the office a call and we'll have the custodian come down and help. Okay, sexual harassment definition, when the conduct hinders or creates an offensive work environment, individual must make clear that the behavior is offensive and a complaint, and a complaint will be filed if not stopped and report. So if you're in a building, please report, ta report that to the principal if you can and if the principal is not available, the assist, one of the assistant principals. Drug-free workplace, we are a drug-free workplace. Uh, must notify district of criminal, drug, alcohol violation within five days of conviction. If you do have a problem, the district stands ready to assist. Hazing, harassment, intimidation, bullying, and menacing. Uh, we are committed to a positive and safe learning environment. HHIBM is strictly prohibited and is not tolerated in the district. It is your duty to stop this action when observed. Harassment of students. Harassment is a uh, teacher to student, student to student, or student to staff. Uh, none of those are tolerated. This includes harassment on the basis of race, color, religion, sex, national origin, disability, marital status, sexual preference, or age. Child abuse reporting, the who and the what. All staff are expected to report suspected child abuse. Reasonable cause, subject to $250 fine if not reported and or loss of licensure. A report is an immediate oral report followed up with a written filing made by you to DHS or a law enforcement agency. A child abuse report form must be completed as soon as possible and filed at the building the uh, child attends, notifying the bill, notify the building administration, and immunity is granted to anyone acting in good faith. House Bill 2062, uh, Sexual Conduct, Sexual Conduct Law enacted by Oregon Legislature took effect July 1st, 2010, so it's been in effect for a few years now. Aimed at targeting sexual grooming behaviors, it stipulates provisions for hiring, reporting, and behavior guidelines. Pertinent information is in your sub-handbook, and we do also have a brochure at the district office. You can contact Shannon if you would like to have a copy of that brochure. Shannon Charlo will be your contact. Employee network uh, code of conduct. Please see the building secretary for a substitute login information when you check in for the day. Our IT department has created a substitute login for our teachers and classified staff. So that is the login that you will need to use when you access our system. You are allowed to use district network and computers for personal use during times you're not responsible for supervising students, as long as the access does not violate district protocol, state law, or TSBC regulations. You have the ability when on a designated break to access the internet to look for jobs on ASOP. Uh, refrain from accessing or passing on obscene or pornographic materials. Network use of conduct, uh, continue, do not solicit funds, distribute chain letters, unauthorized sales or purchases, transmit any materials regarding political campaigns, membership drives or signatures. It is a violation to use district equipment or access for personal gain, such as gambling online, accessing running a personal online business or while at work. Uh, be aware of the copyright laws too, so when you're copying, please be aware of those. Uh, and please do not let students get personal information out on the web under your supervision. Student searches. So unless imminent risk, threat to safety, no student should be searched without administrative presence. Must be based on reasonable suspicion. Searches defined by law include pockets, outer clothing only, backpack, cell phones, accessing the cell phone, personal media devices, accessing those, lockers, cars, etc. Searches will be conducted in privacy, out of the view of other students, staff, and others, and in the presence of an adult witness of the same sex as the student whenever possible. A search form must be completed when a search is completed, and the form is obtained from the school office. So if it comes to that point, please contact somebody at the office level, and they can assist you uh, with that process and procedure. Okay, keys and badges. The key, the key and badge you check out is your responsibility. Please make sure that you turn in your key and badge at the end of the day when you check out for the day. And we haven't had to do this yet, but we do have a replacement key cost of $25. Because we have to, we have a special uh, locksmith that do, does the keys for us. Okay, retirees and PERS information. Re PERS retirees, please track your hours and check the provisions under which you retired from PERS. You can call and ask us if you, you may call and ask, how did I retire under PERS? We we don't know because PERS doesn't give us that information. You have that information, so please make sure that you keep up with those provisions because there are different options out there. Different options have different stipulations, lump sum versus payments over time. 
you can give us a call. We'll do what we can to assist you. At the least, we'll be able to provide you the number two PERS or an email address. They're really good about getting back to you on that. So please make sure that you do contact PERS if you have any of those questions. Lisa Lohman, who used to be in the HR department, now is the payroll and benefits clerk. Many of you are familiar with her. Uh, is now our payrolls clerk, so this is her contact information right here, phone number and email address. All that information is in your sub handbook too. So if you have any questions, you will contact Shannon. Her phone number is up there, so I'll just leave this up here for a minute if you want to write that down. It is in your sub handbook, but just take a look at it, her phone number. As a building administrator, I always love going into classrooms and watching our students engaged in instruction, regardless of who was in front of them. And each of you are an integral part of this, whether you're doing it in the classroom as a teacher, classified staff member, when you're out there supervising on the playground, greeting our kids as they come in from the bus, or just walking into the building to our awesome custodial and maintenance staff. So thanks a lot. We really appreciate you being a part of the team.